Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Beauty Dharma Summit. And I am here with a newfound friend, a beautiful, beautiful soul spirit that I can't wait to share with you. And her name is Kiana Love. I'm Leslie Kristen. I have been hosting the Beauty Dharma Summit. For those of you that know me, you know I'm a makeup artist, the owner of Cara Cosmetics, and a light seeker like every single person in this summit. And boy, have I had such a wonderful journey. And I hope that all of you have been really uh, enjoying a lot of self-exploration and really swimming deep in what the conversation of beauty is, because I have put together 22 speakers in this summit to really um, gift us their knowledge and infuse us with bringing in beauty into all aspects of our life. So welcome, Kiana. I just want to thank you for being here and um, being one of the speakers. It is just such a joy. And I know we are friends for years to come. <laughs> so welcome, <Yeah>. welcome. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Yes. I am going to introduce you before I go into our first question, because she has an amazing background. So Kiana is passionate about empowering women to feel at home in their bodies, to feel safe, nurtured, and loved. Her passion stems from her personal journey, healing from shame and trauma, from sexual violence, painful cycles, cis, grief, and depression. She invites women to realign with nature and awaken to joy. She draws from her journey, studies of the feminine, sacred sexuality, energy healing, nutrition, chakra healing, Ayurveda, creativity to empower women to feel confident, joyous, and free to express themselves. Wow. Yeah. That is beautiful. She is also the founder of Be Wild Woman. She holds a BS in behavioral science from the University of Houston and has certifications in somatic healing and holistic health. She is a wild woman healer, Reiki master, integrated energy therapy instructor, vortex healer, intuitive, holistic health counselor, herbalist, reflexologist, interfaith minister, and yoga teacher. So I'm assuming that you are not 20 years old, even though you look like in your 20s. <laughs> I've had a lot more fun than that. <laughs> <laughs> what a journey, Kiana. Unbelievable. Oh my goodness. So yes, I love that. Having fun. And this this whole this whole summit has been all about how we have just grown and peeled the onion and, and added all this gorgeous life into what our journeys have become now. So, um, wow, all the fabulous stuff that I'm into and I love. So thank you, thank you. Um, and I know you're bringing all of that to here, to, 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 our, to our interview, yeah. yes, to our conversation. So uh, my first question for you is, what does beauty mean to you? You know, beauty is so alive, it really can't be put into words. You know, beauty is an experience. Beauty is where I'm talking about what Be Wild Woman is in, as an incubator for your dreams. Beauty is you feeling alive, needing to see beauty, experience it, you know, it's, it's not limited to what somebody else says is beautiful. I can tell you those are the things it's not. Beauty is that aliveness, that sparkle, that awe, that when you feel when you go to a museum or you look in books or you look at nature and you look at it with that 
sense of wonder where you're not censoring going, do I like it? Do I like it? But you're like, yeah, there's an aliveness there. That That's is beauty. so true. I love that each person has their own definition of beauty, but the more I have been asking this question, the stronger the common thread is. And I agree a hundred percent with you. Um, my next question to you, Kiana, is when did you discover your own beauty? Well, uh, it's like more like I came up to begin with. So when did I discover that I wasn't is more, I'd say what, what happened early on where, you know, it's just kind of this awareness of all the pressure of how you're supposed to look. I grew up feeling very, very awkward, made fun of a lot. Oh. Um, just told I was, I mean, actually straight, straight out told I was ugly, you know, just felt like just totally, I didn't, you know, like beauty was not something that I was going to get to have, you know, and it was interesting at somewhere in there. Pardon the, you know, interesting noises behind me. This is part of Mercury retrograde and finding whatever experience we're in beautiful. So this is part of the, you move into, this is life. But at the time, it was a lot of self-judgment that I lived with. And then even when it was like, okay, you, you look good to everybody else, I felt really awkward and uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. You know, so there was, you know, going through that process of and also working later on in clubs where that's where I made my living from from looking attractive, you're pay, paid to look a certain way, to be liked by people, which for me felt really confining because it wasn't a sense of who I am. It was what I looked like, what I commodified, who I was to people. So I'd say finding beauty was kind of like, is a lifelong journey. There were places that I found pieces of it. And it was more, the more and more I found of it was when I let go of what everybody else was thinking what everybody else you know instead of doing working through what was the self judgments I had about it what you know what I felt about that as well as the other beautiful explanations where I'd be in the woods or look at art and enjoy that and so it was kind of like a like this you know it was like some parts are beautiful some parts there is also the really feeling uncomfortable or or looking at other people as having having the beauty not me or am I going to measure up you know so there was all of that you know like oh and then it was you know whatever thoughts and stuff my you know I grew up with my family having about how you're supposed to look how you're supposed to you know represent the family but you know and then growing up religious of you know what things are bad being sexy is bad you have to be you know well behaved and not draw too much attention I remember my dad at one point saying that well that person must really like you because you know you're attractive and they're not as attractive and they still like you and it was like then I felt really guilty like there's something wrong I shouldn't be looking good or if I do look good or don't look good or what does this mean so it was just all this up in the head stuff and it came shift and that came a lot more with meeting those ugly places not just on the outside, but the places that I, that felt really ugly to me on the inside. Like, you know, I think a lot of us, the here's who I'm supposed to be. And then where I looked really beautiful and more flowy was like when I was out in nature, when it wasn't about everybody else and I didn't have to have that face on. But the more I uncovered those layers, the more I did my healing work and made peace with and accepted and began to see the beauty, of the really young parts of me you know, see beauty there, then it got to shift from this external, what are you going to like about me, transactional beauty, mm. to this living experience of beauty that I get to have, and it also gets to be shared of looking at other people through that lens of beauty, mm -hmm. you know, so that th same curiosity. So I'd say it happened over time, and, you know, even as I continue doing my own healing work, you know, I share it with people that it's because I'm doing this work as well. There'll be moments where it's like, I'm here, the grown up, And next thing you know, there's a ugly duckling 12 year old part of me that's there that I'm sitting with. And 
rediscovering and getting you know honor everything that she's feeling and then experiencing the wow you're really beautiful you know there is a real beauty here to what i'm feeling to what i'm seeing to experiencing other places that i've seen beauty that i'm delighted with was first i had this determination to start looking at people that were older because I recognize how much we can get really stressed out by that, seeing somebody that's the crone. And I was at a fire circle where I wore a crone mask around and to feel the reactions from people to me, some people as me as elder, some people just kind of, you know, drawn back with it. I started doing the looking at my elders, looking at grandmothers, grandfathers, looking at them like, you're me, I'm moving forward into there and being with the feelings and things that come up there. Wow. And I, I find in that also getting to look through the seasons of here is the beauty in the wild when something is just pushing up through the surface. And then when the, the buds are all over the trees, if you don't stop, you're not going to see them. And then you next thing you know, they're on the ground and those have died and some other part has come up. So getting to see where all of our seasons hold all of the beauty, you know, in the fall when the leaves go away. And then things disappear and new things come. So I'm discovering more and more beauty as I move into my 50s. Yes. 50s are good. Yes. <laughs> they are good. I am I am moving my, my way grade. out of the 50s now. So <laughs> yes, I have a birthday yeah. next month and oh. I will be 58. So um, awesome. Yeah. Hey, you know what? And, and I'm not, it, I'm not hung up about that. It's something that even though I am in the industry of, of beauty, um, it is just, it's really sad to, to fear the future, I feel. And it takes away so much from your present and I kick butt at my age <laughs> and I will right. kick butt when I'm 70. <laughs> <laughs> I love that you brought that conversation. I just interviewed one of our speakers uh, is she had a birthday on Sunday and turned 79 and she is absolute. she has, I did not know who this lady was. Her name is Alexandra Stoddard. She is one of our speakers. She has written 26 books on happiness and created a movement of happiness in the seventies and wow. unbelievable. And she is now my new mentor. She is someone that I want to be like when you're getting ready to turn 80. So absolutely what you're saying is because our life now has turned into this. We are looking yeah. down. We are, or if we're looking down, we're turning on something to take a look at the outside and taking pictures of this, you know, obsession with just this outside here. And the obsession, is that something I can comment on right there? Because I just absolutely to please. We have this obsession with the outside, and the, there is a healthiness in looking out. But we're missing is the aliveness and the relationship there, the curiosity, you know, of I'm looking out and also we're missing here the getting to look in where you're talking about the fear there. Mm -hmm. So the challenge there is to also befriend the fear, to be curious, to find the beauty in the fear. And that's a lot of what I had to work out was to go, how do I hold, discover a safe space? to explore, to be with things without just also whitewashing it over. I think we miss it if we're like, I'm just not going to be afraid. That fear there is something really interesting to look at, but unless we have the safety to do so, mm. we're not going to go, then we're going to miss out on some of the 
treasures and richness. For example, a woman that goes, I'm fine, everything's okay, and doesn't really explore under there, and doesn't go, well, let me see what's in this closet, you know, or doesn't have the tool, you know, you don't want to just go there without tools, but you want to go, hey, let me just draw on these tools to kind of go here and be curious about this fear that's there, because that's untapped treasure right there. Yeah. That's where the untapped beauty, joy, all that stuff is. And it's tied up in our personal stuff, our family stuff, collective stuff, all these places where we don't dare to go, we're told don't go there. Beauty is, is a full spectrum experience. It doesn't, it is not um, selective. It is not like uh, we have been told that it belongs to an elite group. Beauty is something that, you know, some of it may take more courage to look at because it's not what everybody else is seeing. But throughout all of our experience, through everything here, everyone in our life, there is a beauty mm -hmm. that takes a little courage and, so, and lots of loving support to be able to walk through and see. That is also another common thread. You are, we, as, as you're sharing some of your um, past, <laughs> you know, I always, so this is, this is how messed up some things are. <laughs> so I remember my mom telling me, okay, <laughs> honey, if, you know, if you have uglier friends, you'll always look prettier. <laughs> like, yeah. like who yeah. says that? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, if your friends aren't as pretty as you you'll always look prettier I yeah. mean and what did I do I created a whole career out of making women look beautiful right Aww. and and my friends I feel like have always been more beautiful than me and that journey of being able to own that like owning your sexiness or your femininity or, you know, your beauty or even um, womanhood. Like, I love the, you know, the wild woman um, from girl to woman, um, all of these things. And like you're saying, having that safe space to go into, because oftentimes our parents didn't provide that safe space because they grew up with whatever junk that they were fed which was not healthy and we you know kind of grew up eating that unhealthiness or you know, that that was you know that was the fertilizer in our minds and taking that time to undo all of this well and the thing is too we didn't know you know that it was actually good fertilizer either because we weren't given that you know if we don't have the tools to be with it we can't uncover the richness that is there i mean I, there is no part of my life that i look back and i regret i mean there are regrets in some of the experience but i wouldn't change any of it because it is all the richness that is here i mean when i was little i thought god put me in the wrong body i thought i was not i was not supposed to be a girl I hated it. I thought it was awful, mm -hmm. ugly. I just, you know, so it, all of that work of shifting that for me was like, wait a moment, there is a treasure here. You know, mm -hmm. I can actually fall in love with this here, which means I can fall in love with that there and everybody that's, that's around me, including those spaces where, you know, my, you know, people might have said stuff that was really awful, you know, to sit with that and feel with that there's there's also wonderful things that can come out of that yeah. so it's beauty is beauty is endless it really is <laughs> uh, yeah it's um it is what it they is are beautiful they are beautifying there's beauty happening they're <laughs> beautifying my bathroom where the tiles fell in and it was meant to be done last week and I got to come now. So there is a beauty process happening in my home where there are concrete bricks exposed. There is a whole gaping hole in my bathroom, but it is in the process of beauty right now. <laughs> I have to say through this process, 
of doing these interviews and just listening to different people is exploring and allowing to just be okay instead of becoming rigid and domineering which i can do that very well as i call it getting into my dude pace space <laughs> that this is how it needs to go is it's okay and yeah. and allowing that to shift just over this past you know week and a half has been very very relaxing so Ooh, bless right. that man over there taking care of your fabulous or woman i don't know <laughs> taking care <laughs> of your amazing bathroom um because that's part of the joy of it so it is okay <laughs> you know you guys are all going to be with me then next week when i'm enjoying my bathroom and it's going to be all part of that experience of the beauty so here's you know here is the beauty salon <laughs> the construction happening in my bathroom, you know, because this is life. Beauty is, you know, a real live beauty is moving, is shifting at all times. It's not um, stuck in an Instagram picture. That is one slice, one moment of it. But the live thing is like, is this is, is not a censored life. It's not the life where you have to hold your breath and, and look great. That's one shot. An edited life. Yeah. Beautiful life is everything from the parts of you that want to edit, the parts you put on it resist, the parts that feel dark, and the parts that are shining in the light. If you look at a masterpiece painting, if everything was light, there's nothing on that canvas. There's nothing there. It's just light. Mm -hmm. You have shadow. You have darkness. You have all of these. But we do need tools for that. We do need... I said that sense of safety, not that I'm going to be safe and nothing's going to happen, but there is that core safety of safety to be yourself, to feel, to be held and heard, kind of like a little baby, like a bird, you know, they're in the nest, they're held, they're an incubator, everything's warm. And then they, you know, then you have the strength to go, I'm going to, Ooh, I'm going to go fly. You really need that first. And now those parts of you that, can feel ugly, can feel judged, or can judge, those parts need care. It needs care here on the inside for there to be beauty, and we really need that between us. We need that mm -hmm. in relationship, and that, there's a lot of places that, it, that it's missing out of fear, out of, you know, mostly out of fear, I just say, is, you know, the fear is the main thing there, that, um, um, misaligned relationship with fear. Wow. That's something to really, really ponder on. Um, Kiana, I would love for you to share about, I'm going to put my glasses on here for a second. Um, I want to share. So you, your business, of course, is kind of multifaceted. Uh, but I would love for you to share, you had sent me some information here about, so the Be Wild Woman is an incubator for your dreams to bloom, a safe haven to heal with nature, and a catalyst for wild, unapologetic, creative women to gather and let their sh light shine free to the world. Yes. That has my name all over it. <laughs> so share that with us. So Wild Woman is, you know, I discovered her and lots of us have discovered her. I discovered her on my healing journey, you know, my healing journey of, you know, first thinking that I should be, you know, like it was awful to be a woman. And then in my nature experiences, just realizing there was this life force that was just kind of just push up and open things up. So on one hand, you have to have the safety for it so that things can express and bloom. But then when you have, you know, and you have this, can have this live relationship with nature. This is what a lot of us, what I found is I was missing. And as a collective, as a society, we can miss out on. And we're like, I'm going to Disneyfy and put this in a box and do this here. We need 
we need an incubator to be able to relax and let nature grow the way it actually does. And for us to know that we don't have to manufacture and push forward and always come from the masculine, beauty comes in the masculine and feminine form. Beauty has been said to be this beautiful feminine thing. Masculine is a strong thing. Beauty is a continuum, you know, but we don't get to experience that when we've divided them into masculine is strong and powerful, feminine is beautiful and weak. We really miss the boat when we're not connected with nature herself as a live force. That to me is wild woman. She is this live, intuitive, instinctive, feminine nature force, and she cannot be controlled. You cannot put her in a box. You cannot tell her what to do. That force comes through. That's where, you know, things push through the sidewalk. The tree will push through. Nature will push through. In the same way, there's all of a sudden there's that no in you, that yes, you know, like where did that come from? And then we can shut it down where the body is speaking even where a fear image comes up the body speaks in really powerful ways and when we shut down the unconscious or shut down our connection to the life force then we end up in this box of life instead of letting the life force come through and feed and nurture you and that's a travesty when women when humans don't have that live connection that sustains us that we can be in awe of it every morning we wake up and go, oh, this is life. This is life right here, right here in this moment. You and I are experiencing the most exquisite, miraculous thing that we're alive here in this. And it's a travesty if we miss it, trying to get a shot, but missing out on that life force that we deserve to have throughout our whole entire life. Now, in that incubator, we can begin to reclaim and reconnect to the life force that's already been in you through your whole life, that you see very clearly in a baby and get shut down, but <laughs> the life force is still is there. So that is my mission of holding that safe space for women survivors of, for women in general, but especially for women survivors of complex trauma. That was my story. The more trauma that's there, the more that keeps you in that box of, I'm gonna survive, I'm gonna be strong, I'm gonna make it through, mm -hmm. but you don't have the energy and the support to process things. So instead of this or this, it becomes this life force that you don't have to control. You don't even know what's gonna be created, but it's gonna be amazing. Yeah. And to have that live connection with each other. So it's, I'm holding this space as an incubator for women, also knowing that it's not just going to be for women. But if we shift our relationship there and experience as women, that shifts our relationship in the live flow of experience with our children, with our partners, with life of what our sons come through experiencing and say, this feminine is really awesome. This feminine, masculine, all of this here, this is beautiful. I love that. That's just <laughs> amazing. Uh, and, and I get teary with that, you know, because like, you know, the things that shifted for me is from where my brother drowned when I was three, right in front of me. You know, when my grand, my, my family went through the war, where all those kind of things that were really challenging and dark, where I fell out of the car shortly after my brother had passed, you know, just all of these places where you, you stop living, you know, or the other one I had all the depression, insomnia, you know, skin things that happened, you know, things with my cycle. And, you know, the stories that I hear from women, you know, not getting, not having, getting to enjoy their life. You know, some women that come to me are young, but some women are like in her 70s. And, you know, like they, you know, that life force is there too. You know, it's never, I say it's never too late to have a happy childhood. Those parts in you that are all different ages are eternal. The baby, the teenager, adolescent, all of you is eternal. Mm. I love that. It is never too late to have a happy childhood. No. I mean, you can see that in like 
women, like when they're our elders, when they're in their joy, you see like this little kid in them and it's really beautiful. You see, and if you can start shifting to live fully your life fully, then you can start looking at it going, wow, look at this woman, you know, yeah, she's older, the body, but she's, look at the life that has happened here. Look at the story that is shared here. This life that has moved through to here. Mm -hmm. You know, we can discover that in a new way when we're not afraid, when we're not imprisoned by fear. I'm saying that very clearly. It's not about not having fear. We have a different relationship with it. It's like, oh, let me be held here. This is not silly. This is not stupid. I can allow life here and be with where, for me, being truly alive means you're there with the joy, with the fear, with the vulnerability, with all of it as it, it's, it just moves. Life is all of this. That's we don't have to use a remote control to stop it. You can <laughs> breathe and support to be with it. Ah, <laughs> uh, what a beautiful journey. I mean, it's, it's so, so share with us because I know you have a beautiful free gift for our viewers as well as how people can explore these, the, your incubator, you know, either virtually, I know you're, you're in New York, so um, I'm in Florida. So share with us a little bit about how, you know, what they're going to still be able to explore with you and then how they can become your friend. <laughs> Yay. <laughs> yeah. So, you know, I definitely moved beyond being self-conscious because a lot of the, because of this, I'm like, this stuff needs to be shared. So that's where, you know, I come up against my edge. So I'm excited to meet you. And there's my little girl that's like, Ooh, okay, here we are. So, you know, uh, I'm excited to share with you. Out, like, I don't know if I mentioned the WBBC, but that's something I really wanted to share the wild body broadcasting corporation. So a lot of this process is shifting from the outside media to the wonderful media that's in here. So what I want to share with you is a little piece of that journey. It's a little bit, a little bit of a five-day journey that you can take. Uh, just getting to know a little bit of the wonderfulness of the Body Broadcasting Corporation. So, and, <laughs> and okay, and also have a little bit of of a tool for that. So I'm going to share with you a little bit of a tool of how to feel, how do you navigate this by feeling at home in your body? So you're gonna have me there with you and my little, and, and Liza, and uh, have a little bit of that of like, how do I navigate that? How do I connect in with Wild Woman? So I'm gonna share a little experience with you and take that little journey with you because I'm, I'm always retaking that journey too. Each, each day is a new day, there's mm -hmm. new pieces of it. So it's a little bit of a beauty pleasure journey. And so you can go to my website and also there you can find other information about for there as a newsletter there and you grab the gift and I'll also be sharing with you the things that the, the things I'm up to the things that come through and also wanting to connect with you and hear about what's coming up for you because all of this is a relationship beauty yeah. is not by itself beauty is in relationship. So you can go to www.bewildwoman dot com and be wild woman. Woman. Com. that's easy yeah yeah <laughs> singular be wild you be wild woman or be wild woman like you can be you are her when you let her in you are wild woman we collectively are her be what be wild woman dot com forward slash you are beauty nice Kiana, thank you. This has been a beautiful conversation with you. I think there's a lot that we can be very introspective about with this conversation. And hopefully um, some of you that are watching this can you know, get this glimpse of just gorgeous life out of that. And, and I can't wait to, I can't wait to go through your, 
<laughs> you're good as well because I haven't done it. So I'm very excited. And thank you, thank you, thank you so much. You're welcome. Uh, yes, Can absolutely. Can we take one breath together? Can we take one breath together? Just hold your heart. Feel this beautiful beating heart. Breathe in. From the heavens and exhale down. And know that Mother Earth is going to be holding here, you here for the rest of your day and the rest of your beautiful life. And so it is. So it is. And so it is. Beautiful. Beautiful. And that's a great way to start our day and to end our day is with that little exercise right there. Thank you, Kiana. You're a, just a tender, beautiful spirit. Oh my gosh. And I am just honored that you have taken the time to be with us and to share all of your gifts. And now you have a whole bunch of new friends that know about you and you uh, vice versa. So Kiana, love, thank you. And I will see you on the next Beauty Dharma series. Thank you. Bye. Have a beautiful, beautiful day.